So at this time, we would like to call our June business meeting to order. Um, Mr. Homer, would you do our invocation? Heavenly Father, as we come to you this evening, we thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for each and every one. Okay? Amen. Alex Becker, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, public for which it stands, one nation, under God, visible. Oh. Miss Annie, would you lead us in our preamble? Accordance with inherent power. Self governance of the Lumbee tribe, North Carolina. Tribe adopts the Constitution for the purposes, purposes of establishing a tribal, tribal government structure, structure preserving for all time the Lumbee way of life and community, community promoting the educational, cultural, cultural social, social, and economic, and economic well being of Lumbee people, people and, and securing justice and freedom, and freedom for the Lumbee people. Carrie, would you do our roll call? Billy Oxenine. Present. Sharon Hunt. Here. Daryl Goosby. Here. Carol Smith. Here. Pam Hunt. Here. J.D. Bullard. Here. Wendy Moore. Carrington Locklear. Here. Christy Hunt. Richard Jones. Here. Nancy Locklear here. Yvonne Dye. Rudy Locklear. Here. Kathy Hunt. Doy McNeil. Bobby Manuel. Here. Chakawana Osanine. Here. Joe Doss. Annie Taylor. Here. Alex Baker. Here. Homer Fields. Here. You have a point. Miss Yvonne asked if she could be excused due to the death of her family and services today. Ethics statement is in accordance with ethics and conflict of interest ordinance 2010. March to 12, 2010. It is the duty of every council member to avoid both apparent and perceived conflicts of interest with regard to any matters before council in this business meeting. If so, please refrain from participation in those deliberations. All documents that require council action are considered confidential and shall not be disseminated until after a vote by the full council. I'd like to welcome you to our June business meeting. I did not invite any uh, Student school is out, so I figured they didn't want to be bothered. Um, a lot of churches are having vacation Bible school this week, and I know they have worn us out over at our church. But uh, we had a we had a huge turnout for ours. Um, I would like to to let you know that Miss <clears throat> Liliana that presented before us a few months ago is actually competing today. So say a prayer for her. She's actually. Uh, competing in Dallas, Texas today for the national competition. We will we will not know tonight. We will not know till tomorrow night. Till they present the awards tomorrow night at their banquet, and she has told me that she will call me as soon as she finds out. So we wish her well, and we hope that we bring at least one of the three national awards home. Uh, there's two students, I think, from. Mount Airy that are competing level as well. Um, y'all get your tickets today? Did you get your Lumbee homecoming tickets today for the pageant? Okay. On a funny night. Were y'all out there at 3 o'clock this morning? Is that why y'all look so sleepy? Okay. All right. 
Um, I heard that they sold out within a matter of couple, in a couple hours, but anyway. Um, at this time, I will entertain a motion for the review and approval of the agenda. Madam Speaker, I make a motion to approve the agenda. Jody in a second by uh, need to do okay all in favor let it be known by saying aye. aye okay the next item on the agenda is the review and approval of the may tribal council minutes and actions motion by mr joel goolsby second. second by mr oxendine all in favor Okay. The next item is the review and the approval of the May special called meeting minutes and actions. By Ms. Taylor. Favor. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, at this time, we will hear from our chairman, Mr. John Lowry. Good evening. Thank y'all for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak before you. Good to be here today. Uh, as you guys can see, we are celebrating our 250th home uh, over the lifetime of the current tribal government, and that is definitely an achievement. That's 250 families that have received homes through us. Awesome. And, uh, <laughs> I was just looking at Harold, but we, we were down at District 3 this past week and um, found out that uh, District 3's got like so many of these houses over, over the lifespan, like, like 13, 14 homes, right? So uh, it was good to know that, that we're able to, to, to really be able to see where all the homes have been put at and placed at over the years. And uh, regardless of what anybody says, uh, you know, we have done a great job of making sure that our, that our citizens have received these services no matter where they are in the Moore County Territory. Um, we have some exciting news um, as of yesterday. The governor signed something that has definitely been on the minds of this council throughout the years, and uh, it's called the American Indians Graduate with Honors Act. That became law as of yesterday when Governor Cooper signed it. <laughs> As you guys know, uh, you've heard it just like I've heard it. Uh, we've we've had a number of our students over the last few years come to us, and you know, parents come to us and saying, you know, that, that they could not wear their feathers, uh, they could not wear a certain attire uh, because they were graduating, and and uh, you know, you know, due to them graduating because the school system had told them that they could not, whether it was here in in, in um, Robinson County or or other counties throughout the state. Well, with this legislation being passed, no school board, no school administrators, no principal. Stop our native kids and stop our Lumbee kids wearing their feathers to graduation. So, uh, and that's the law. So, uh, it's a shame that you have to pass a law like that. But if you don't do it, uh, you know, our students continue to get their feathers snatched off their heads as they're walking up, you know, to graduate, which I think is ridiculous that we are living like that. And, you know, but not, but not anymore. So, um, today, a uh, number of us. Attended uh, Roof Dial Woods' uh, um, funeral, Dr. Roof Dial Woods, and just wanted to just remind folks that she was the first tribal administrator here uh, with the tribe. Um, prior to her death, none of the past tribal administrators had passed away. So we actually had, had all of them, her all the way up to, to uh, Mr. Ricky, were all still alive. Um, so, uh, so we have lost a piece of our history as a tribal government with her passing and of course being at the funeral today and just hearing all of her accomplishments man it's just everything she was a part of so we we've, we've definitely lost a treasure among the people 
Um, <clears throat> tomorrow, Bear Creek over on Glen Road, uh, we will be breaking ground over there. As you know, we highlighted the, the purchase of that land um, at the end of last year. I think it was around November time period. Um, and then uh, as of tomorrow, we will be great. We will be breaking ground over there where we will start doing the actual infrastructure and we will be leading into building the homes there. So that's going to be tomorrow at 1230 at Glen Road property. Uh, and that's District 13, District 13. So we are moving ahead with that. And uh, we're going to have a nice community over there in, uh, in just a, probably, probably about a year, a year or two, all these homes built. Um, the following Friday, we will do our unveiling of the property over in Rennert. So that's District 10, um, and that will be at 1130 next Friday. So definitely want you guys to be able to come out to both of these events if you're able to. Um, but definitely proud to be going into areas that we have not been into and providing homes in areas that we have not been able to provide uh, homes for uh, before. So uh, definitely exciting times. Also, as you came in tonight, you've probably seen the veteran statue over to the right-hand side of coming into property here. So um, <clears throat> that was just finished over the weekend. That's over the weekend, that, that was just finished. So we have not planned an, an uh, official unveiling yet, so we're gonna have to work on some dates and stuff, and I'll definitely get that to you guys. But once again, that's something that you all approved uh, probably about two or three years ago or three budgets ago um, so you guys set aside money for that and uh, we did consult with the Lumbee Veterans uh, uh, the Lumbee Warriors Association and some of our veterans on that and uh, and uh, it, it, it looks really good definitely I'm looking forward to having that unveiling and getting everybody out here and let's highlight and and, and honoring our veterans that being said uh, that concludes my report speaker thank you Back on what he said about Dr. Woods, um, the chairman did present a proclamation today. Um, are not any community comments, right? Okay, moving right along to our committee reports. The first one we have is um, Ms. Pam Hunt with finance. Good evening. We received um, some additional funds for our mortgage pandemic relief program. And this came out of the finance committee. I will read from the fifth whereas. It states, whereas the tribal council of the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina reserves the right to amend the budget upon the chairman's recommendation as deemed appropriate to maintain the balanced budget. And whereas the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina has received a grant from the U.S. Department of the Treasury to be named U.S. Treasury Mortgage Pandemic Relief Budget in the amount of $11,273,991. And whereas the U.S. Treasury has amended the grant amount to 11000 I mean $11,000,000, $906,508.38, which is an additional $632,517.38. And whereas the grant will be administered as described in the budget below, therefore be it enacted by the Tribal Council of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina, the following ordinance shall be cited as, as the U.S. Treasury Mortgage Pandemic Relief Budget subject to all inclusions and provisions as stated by the U U United States Department of Treasury. I will entertain a motion for, uh, no, it's coming from committee, so it doesn't require much. I'm sorry, I was distracted. I had to ask Ms. Belinda about the signage of this. Um, U.S. Treasury Mortgage Pandemic Relief Budget. Uh, is there any discussion? Mr. Beal? Uh, 
in the community, we talked about is uh, the salary, and it's still on here. It there's gonna be um, it ain't on the increase, right? We were assured that that would not be that, that has already been added in for the additional. Further discussion? Secretary. Billy Otson, nine. Yes. Sharon Hunt. Yes. Gerald Goosby. Yes. Harold Smith. Yes. Pam Hunt. Yes. J.D. Bullard. Yes. Wendy Moore. Carrington Locklear. Yes. Christy Hunt. Yes. Richard Jones. Yes. Nancy Locklear. Yes. Yvonne Da. Rudy Locklear. Yes. Kathy Hunt. Joy McNeil. Yes. Bobby Emanuel. Yes. Chakawana Oxenine. Yes. Josephine Dose. Annie Taylor. Yes. Alex Baker. Yes. Homer Fields. Yes. Next, <clears throat> the next ordinance is CLLO 2023-0615-02 Playground Resurfacing Budget. We were um, we were given monies in the amount of one hundred sixty thousand dollars for the purpose of resurfacing the playground. I will read from the fifth whereas. Whereas the tribal council has authority and fiduciary responsibility to ensure compliance with program funding and allocations. And whereas the Lumbee Tribal Budget, CLLO 2023-0615-02, Playground Resurfacing Budget is addressed with the provision stated below. Therefore, it be enacted by the Tribal Council of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina, the following ordinance shall be cited as CLLO 2023-06150-2, Playground Resurfacing Budget, subject to all inclusions and provisions. Okay, coming from committee, it doesn't require a motion. Is there any discussion? Mr. Goosby. Yeah, one comment, uh, just to be clear, this was funds that was donated to the tribe for this purpose from an anonymous donor. So we just need to make sure that we, I don't know who it was, yeah. but thank that's, them. Yeah, thank that's what I said. We were blessed with yeah, funds from an anonymous stone. I just want to make point that we thank them for. Jones? Or out at the Culture Center. Mr. Harris is going to address that. Yes, sir, Mr. Council Members, the, the, uh, Stuff we use for the <laughs> playground, we're going to change it to rubber. Any further? Billy. Billy Ots 9. Yes. <laughs> Sharon Hunt. Yes. Gerald Goosby. Harold Smith. Yes. Pam Hunt. Yes. Jody Bullard. Yes. Wendy Moore. Karen Tillauclear. Yes. Christy Hunt. Yes. Richard Jones. Yes. Nancy Locklear, yes. Yvonne Da. Rudy Locklear. Kathy Hunt. Joy McNeil. Yes. Bobby Emanuel. Yes. Chakawana Oxendine. Yes. Josephine Dose. Annie Taylor. Yes. Alex Baker. Yes. Alma Fields. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, is everything for finance? Next on the agenda is the Constitution and Ordinance. Mr. Dewey McNeil. I'm going to read CLLO-2023. Dash zero six one five dash zero one ordinance to govern the use of the seal of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina. I'll start with the fourth whereas. Whereas the tribal 
Council of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina supports the use of the tribal seal of the Lumbee Tribe by enrolled tribal members as a way to promote cultural pride and heritage in a way that Lumbee and whereas the Lumbee, the Tribal Council of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina seeks to provide an equitable and uniform procedure for enrolled tribal members to petition for consideration the use of the tribal seal of the Lumbee Tribe on goods and services while protecting the strength and integrity of the seal. Whereas the Tribal Council of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina desires to protect the trademark seal of the Lumbee Tribe and has adopted official tribal seal ordinance number CLLO. 203-0615-01 and whereas the tribal council of the Lumbee tribe hereby enacts the civil offenses and penalties persons and or entities that violate the tribal seal ordinance number C L L O two three dash zero six one five dash zero one in section one and therefore be it resolved the tribal council of the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina does hereby enact the ordinance to govern the use of the seal let me try with North Carolina. And section one just lists application for consideration. Okay, coming from the committee, it doesn't require a motion. Is there any discussion? Mr. Beal. Uh do it or did, are we gonna put that on the website where people know the penalty if they misuse it to seal? Once it's, it hangs for 30 days and it's uh, it's official, maybe with the ordinances on the website. All ordinances are on the website, Mr. Bill. Did we say early in the TNO meeting <clears throat> we were going to wait till the Harry Council or we're going to do? Did we say in the CNO meeting are we, we waiting to hire a council, legal council on this issue or are we going to move forward with it? because we've been waiting too long to have ordinance that governs the, the tribal seal so this is a step moving forward who will be the legal counsel over this if we decide if an offense is made as of right now then Danielle would be acting because it's the tribal seal I would imagine at all times because it doesn't belong to the council it belongs to the tribe so. any further questions or discussion I just want to ask this. Mr. Jarrell? As the administration started working on the policy, I get calls all the time for the seal, and I'm telling them to wait until we get a policy. So I, I guess y'all working on a policy already. I know the law is not active until it's signed and hung. I'm just, in the meantime, is there a policy been developed already? Mr. Harris? Mr. Harris said that they will start on that on your list <laughs> okay um secretary b lee Otson nine yes sharon hunt yes gerald goosby harold smith yes ham hunt yes jd bullen yes wendy moore carrington locklear yeah Christy Hunt, Richard Jones, yes, Nancy Locklear, yes, Yvonne Da, Rudy Locklear, yes, Kathy Hunt, Dory McNeil, yes, Bobby Emanuel, yes, Chaka One Awesome Nine, yes, Josephine Doss, yes, Annie Taylor, yes, Alex Baker, yes, Homer Fields, yes. The next item on Mr. Harold. While we're in Constitution Ordinance, we have an ordinance dated 2018, part of our housing requirements and information that the Tribal Council should get. And I just want to know when we're going to actually start getting a complete packet so we can we can know exactly what's going on in our district. And that ordinance, if you want to look it up, C L L O dash two zero one eight. And it, it, it gives us a list of everything that we should be receiving other than this minute piece of paper that tells us the same thing every month. So I, as a tribal council person, I want mine. 
Now, I don't believe in, in, in cutting down more trees. Compile a report and send it in an email. It's much easier to read. But we, I want my, it's, it's an ordinance, so I want my, and I, I, I'm pretty sure everyone around this table wants yours also. And if you'll go look at that ordinance, there is a wealth of information there that you need to know. And this is just called accountability. Okay. I, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Hurl, can you repeat that order? C L L O dash one eight that's zero three one five that's zero one S four zero three one five dash zero one that's C L L O dash O two one eight dash zero three one five dash O one, right? Um I will make uh, also while we're in CNO. Before we move to that, can I address him? Oh, thank you, uh, thank you, Chair. Mr. Ricky, would you look into that for Mr. Um, Smith? Thank you very much. Okay. And we, we need we need June's report. Daddy. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, while we're in CNO, um, and, and I think fellow council members for bringing this forward with the seal it puts teeth in our government um, I'm gonna bring something similar to this resolution from the IRB committee because if we're gonna stand behind the seal and protect the people I think our IRB needs to stand behind our people also protect them also with the IRB I'll be contacting um, the IRB team put some similar resolution in place uh, Again, just another resolution to protect our people with IRB. Okay. We Thank have you. we have studies going on in our community without yeah. our authorization that we have know nothing about. Thank you, Mr. Bullard. Um, anybody else? Okay, moving right along to the education. Um, Miss Yvonne's not here, so Miss Chakawana will present. At our education meeting on June, um, June 6, we realized that um, we needed to make some adjustments to the scholarship, the way that they would be um, distributed, because there was so many more recipients this year. So um, on our meeting on June 6, we voted for option C. That was the third option. So I'll start reading at the fourth whereas. Whereas the Education, Cultural, and Public Relations Committee established the Lumbee Educational Scholarship to assist tribal members through scholarships in their efforts to assist in their finances of their education and whereas the amount of $157,410.44 is the budget for the Education, Cultural, and Public Relations Committee and Whereas the Tribal Council of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina supports and agrees that the education budget and amount of $157,410.44 be spent as stated below. And therefore, be it resolved, the Tribal Council of the Lumbee Tribe of North Carolina supports and agrees that the designated funds be spent as directed for scholarships and other educational and necessary purposes. And it just tells you how it'll be distributed. The Curtis Lee Locklear Scholarship, which is $1,500 a piece, a piece, each for three top high school graduates and for the top three college students. And that was a total of 9,000. That left a remaining $112,500 for scholarships in the amount of $500, $500 each for high school graduates and college students. We decided on $13,000 for a scholarship banquet. Um, the writing contest was $600, and the art contest, we would have our $600. And any money that we didn't use, like in the, um, the, for the banquet, we would have still left in that budget. Um, that coming from committee um, doesn't require a motion, but I have one question. Did we decide what date that these kids would get the scholarships? Because I've had like four kids text me this week. So Miss Yvonne sent me a message and said that we needed to um, that had to change the date, and I was going to bring that up in the meet afterwards. The twenty seventh, is that right, Miss um, Lakeisha? We're still waiting. Um, they, the judges just got their the applications to judge this week. I'd ask them to have them by Friday, so hopefully by next week. But we are looking at June twenty. 
27th for the ceremony. So just let them know that I'll, I will be contacting them and letting them know um, when they are awarded and who's awarded. Because we had a du the double of what we had okay. last year. So was there any other questions? Just got Gerald? I have a couple. And I'm so sorry I missed the last education uh, meeting because we was on business for the tribe. But uh, a couple things. One, the $50,000 that we set aside for a um, endowment. Uh, I don't think we ever did the endowment. Are we applying that money to this scholarship fund? Yes. It is in this budget. And secondly, uh, I had brought up about uh, the possibility of uh, doing an Agnes Chavis scholarship named not to increase the budget or anything but actually to do a name to honor her because of her uh, work with education and with the teachers and all the work she's done in her life it was her life goal with education and i was was that discussed and also thirdly uh i guess I, i've told them that uh you know we were still going to do my son's scholarship it's not listed in this ordinance as well is there do i need another ordinance or or how do we need to do that? They did call me and ask me, and I did confirm, but uh, it's not listed. She said it comes out of my pocket, so we didn't have to use the ordinance, but at the beginning we had to do an ordinance. So I just won't know if it's a continuing ordinance or, or what. Maybe that particular ordinance was just to establish the scholarship. I mean, I'm game with whatever the tribe wants to do. I just get calls on. I told them apply for the call. I mean, at the tribe, I can, I can move the scholarship to a church if the tribe doesn't want to do it anymore. Mr. Buller, um, I, I weren't in education, but somebody asked this question. Um, the scholarship was from last year. How much was it? Please, a thousand. Why is there a decrease this year? Have more students, but we still got funds left over, right? We still have funds left over in the budget, in the education budget, right? <clears throat> so I'm, I'm just asking, will there be a remaining balance if all the scholarships are taken care of? Couldn't be. So when they come back to the table next year, it'll be a zero balance, right? To be a zero balance. Yes, you're right. It says, <clears throat> it says 157410 dollars will be spent stated below. But when I add one twelve, nine thousand, thirteen thousand, and twelve hundred, it doesn't equal one hundred fifty seven. Am I not looking am I looking at this? Had the education meeting that include the food. Is that is that the thirteen thousand? Well, when you add one thousand twelve hundred five one hundred twelve thousand five hundred to thirteen thousand to nine thousand to twelve hundred, it doesn't equal one fifty seven. Uh, am I not adding it right? Did you? The banquet for the first in November that we're having, that was where that money's coming to. The remaining, that's where that was, that, that's going to be coming from. This well, money. shouldn't it be on this piece of paper? Because it says it's to be stated below. Madam Chair, did um, Richard add the 1500 three times? 9000 Right above that, there's 1500 Three times for Mr. Kearney's scholarships. Is that but not correct? But it says totaling nine thousand. And and who's doing the banquet? Where is it coming? Who's who's doing it? So how do we know it's going to be thirteen thousand?
But how do we? I understand the price of food's going to. How do we know it's going to be thirteen thousand? Okay, so we don't. We don't know that. Hold on a minute. That's what your budget. That's what you're budgeting it for thirteen thousand. Clarification. Okay, so it was not a specific person as we did for the gala. There was just thirteen thousand dollars or whatever amount allotted for the banquet, and you've got to stay within that budget no matter who does it. So that answers that. I want to reply to um, Gerald's question or Gerald's statement. We have to accept Gerald's funds just like we had to accept the funds from this anonymous donor as a council. So yes, we do. That does need to be included either in this um, ordinance or standalone. But we do have to accept it because when when this entity gets audited, we can't be off by in, where where that extra money's come from. Well, Mr. Joel gave it to us. Well, it's not accounted for. So yes, we do need to add that, Joel. And I I just want to clarify that. So if you can give us an amount, we could pencil it in here. So chalk one at a thousand. Two five hundred dollar scholarships for Derek Goldsby. Anybody else have their hand raised? Yeah. Mr. Bill, I'm sorry. Um, in the comment in the committee uh, about the thirteen thousand, we we they said it'd be an estimate, and then if any left, they we it'll be a carryover. If I'm correct. Yeah, they're just budgeting that amount. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It would be yes. a carryover if you don't spend all that. Yeah. Give us just one minute. We're working on these figures. Um, I would just like to say uh, thanks to Mr. Gerald for committing to give that money um, out of his own pocket. I know it's in behalf of your son, right? I don't, I never want him to take it away from the tribe and give it somewhere else um, because of logistical paperwork. So thanks, Mr. Gerald, for doing that and um, making that recommendation about the other scholarship as well. Mr. Bill, um, you estimate Caden for how many people? How many people you estimate Caden food for? When we talked about it in the meeting, we said that that was for double the students last year, and they could invite two guests for the. That was many student with probably their parents and the, with the parents. So we had over 300 applicants. So if they bring two people a piece, that's close to 600 people. And why? Uh, the reason I asked that question is how many people will, will the, the gym hold if you put six, will it hold 600 people? That's a four master code, then you gotta have a careful number. Okay, so we've got a difference in in what's been allocated. Twenty one thousand seven ten. 44 cent plus the thousand from Mr. Goolsby. And, um,
Mr. Uh, Baker. I make a motion on the $21,710.44. That does not count Mr. Gerald's allocation. I recommend or make a motion that that be used to establish an endowment and we move forward with the ordinance in front of us. So we did that, went through an endowment in detail. We even had somebody come in and say, right at this moment, we're not at capacity to establish an endowment. There's a lot of legalities and stuff that we'd have to go through first. So we were hoping that by the next budget to get those things worked out. So that's why we hadn't, because we had 50,000, but um, there's just several issues. It's not, it's not just, here's UNCP, here's RCC, we're gonna give you 21,000. There's, there's a lot more to it than just us saying we want to do it. Unless, unless we just leave it. Yes, yes, we had a financial planner in our midst and he and I even talked to him this week and he he really advised us to you know caution us to wait until we can get our logistics in order I really don't. I mean, we're we're jumping around so much. I really like to second his motion, but but now that you brought up the finance, the financial advisor I talked to said that we need to be putting this money at least be starting somewhere. I know I know we're not going to make up the rules, but we need to be starting. Now that's what the financial advisor told me. But I, I second that motion, and um, we can move on with can, the difference. Can we just hold on one second? She is going to get her a uh, her. Her notes from that meeting, apparently something might have been left off as she was writing the resolution. Can you just give us a minute to just check that to see if by chance she left something off? To see if the numbers will add up. Just double check her number. She will be right back. So, Madam Speaker, Ms. Pam, this University, Ms. Pam. Um, the $50,000 that we used last time to go toward an endowment, what are we, is we just holding it's, on to that? Or is that in the from what my, From what my understanding is from Miss, and, and I hate that she can't be here, that that's included in this budget. Because we, Miss, Miss, uh, what do we, okay, so Miss, she's agreeing that it's correct because we don't have leftover funds. Okay. I have the missing link. Want to hear it? Okay. I want to see it. Well, this was from the, the education. We got a copy machine. I, just let me read it to you. She's going to get you a copy. But the missing link was this was from that education meeting they had. It might have been when y'all were out of town, Mr. Richard. Okay, so there was $21,710.44 left over, which, which is what she just calculated as well. And according to her notes, that $21,710.44 was to be used for the banquet in November for the former councils and the, the first council and the folks who wrote the Constitution, that, that event that's supposed to be November the 10th. You know what I'm talking about? We've talked about it for about a year now. They, they have, Mr. Harrell brought it up. In November, uh, they had planned an event for the first tribal council for the folks who who wrote the Constitution. There was... You remember the night that Miss Ruth and them was here? 
I remember talking about it, but I don't remember it costing $21,000. I think that was the what came out of the committee and what was left over was the 21000 They said they would use it for that. Uh, and if there was any left over, I'm just telling you what was said in the meeting. But that's not my call. You want to be looking at it? I have a motion and a second on the floor to take the difference and put in an endowment, but. I'd like to take my motion back and I'd like to send this back to committee. I second. Sorry. Okay, we have a motion in by uh, Mr. Alex Baker to send it back to committee for clarification. Um, a second by Mr. Richard Jones. Is there any further discussion? Madam Speaker, if by any means possible, if we can, could we? Increase the scholarships? Uh, if, be, uh, be at the meeting. That's the reason we're taking it back to committee. There ain't no need to discuss it tonight because you can't decide on it tonight. So just if you want to, if you want input, be at the meeting. Okay. Okay. Mr. Jarrell. Uh, I just want to say it would be appropriate to talk about Miss Agnes's at that meeting. Also. Right. Thank you. Any questions you have, any concerns you have, any doubts you have, any suggestions you have, I would suggest that you be at that education meeting to to resolve it once and for all, okay? Thank you. Okay, before we move to the agenda, oh, I'm sorry, um, Madam Secretary, will you do a roll call vote on Mr. Baker's motion? Billy Oxenine? Yes. Sharon Hunt? Yes. Gerald Gooseby? Yes. Earl Smith? Yes. Pam Hunt? Yes. Jody Bullard? Yes. Wendy Moore? Karen Tanlocklear? Yes. Christy Hunt? Yes. Richard Jones? Yes. Nancy Locklear? Yes. Miss Yvonne Da? Rudy Locklear? So, scholarship ceremony is the 29th of June, and if we're sending this back to committee, you're going to have to have a meeting before. I no, I vote no. I don't. They moved the today, July. July. I vote Kathy yes. Kathy Hunt. <laughs> Kathy Hunt. Yes. Doyle McNeil. Yes. Bobby Emanuel? Yes. Chakawana Oxenine? Yes. Josephine Doss? Yes. Annie Taylor? Yes. Alex Baker? Yes. Homer Fields? Motion carries. That's okay, before we uh, start on the calendar review, I, I meant to mention to y'all earlier that uh, former Tribal Council member Mr. Richard Locklear lost his wife this week, Miss Anita. Some of you might have served with Mr. Richard back in, I think her funeral is tomorrow. Uh, right, well, funeral Saturday, the visitation is tomorrow. Mr. Richard Locklear served um, a few years back. Um, and another thing I forgot to mention is that we have two birthdays tonight. Mr. Carrington's birthday, and it's Miss Josephine's birthday. Thank you. Hey, happy birthday. I will, I will not sing to you because all the time. But anyway, so moving uh, on to the calendar review, um, we are, Speaker. hang on a minute, we are at the 15th. Um, on Monday, the tribal offices will be closed. Uh, next week on the 22nd, we do have a district meeting in District 12. We have a community meeting at Gray Palm Baptist Church at 630. That's Miss Josephine and Miss Annie's district. Friday night, um, it's the senior Miss Lumbee pageant at 630 at the GPAC. Um, hang on a minute. 
uh, the 23rd, uh, which is Friday night. Uh, our current senior, Miss Lumby, has done a phenomenal job. Um, I didn't get to go to the game last night because we had Bible school, but I did watch the video, and she did a great job doing the national anthem at the game last night. Um, on that Friday night, the 24th, is the Veterans Ball at the Farmer's Market. The 27th will be the Elders Luncheon at the Farmer's Market at noon, and they have had... 500 requests, I think already. I think they're, I think they're at their limit. Um, TCRC will be meeting also on that night at 6:30. Is there anything else for June, Mr. Bill? Did the drive you some a ticket for the same Nick Wimby page? Hold on. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Gerald. As far as the calendar, I sent out a text that uh, Josh Malcolm's report, his two available dates would be the 20th or the 22nd. Uh, you know, we're bound by an ordinance that that report has to be presented and we had to put it off because of conflicts. So what's the, the will of the council? We'll reschedule it if need to, but I didn't give him a date. I told him I'd present it. And you guys let me know what you want Are you to talking do. about June? June, yes. Well, the 22nd isn't doable because we have a community meeting that night. Say it again, I'm sorry. The 22nd is not available. We have a community meeting that night. Right, so do, do y'all want to do one on the 20th, or do you want me to send it back and get some other dates? His schedule, he's out of town a lot, so I'm trying to – I asked him for a couple of dates each time so we could choose – and if they don't work, we'll just go back and get another one. Dates again. Right again. now it's the, the 20th. 20th or the 22nd. 22nd is not available. 22nd is out. Is Schedule it for the 20th. The 20th okay with y'all? Yes. Okay. So the, the 20th economic development, Josh's report, LTH report. 630. 630, yes. Okay. 630 on the 20th for LTH for the um, – Economic Development Committee, but Josh Malcolm's LTH presentation. That's a long meeting, so it would be nice if we only had the one that night. That's all. I'll that's it. Whatever. On the 27th, I already told you about the luncheon. Moving on to July. If that's everything for June. Uh, for June. Miss Miss Sharon, I'm at an education meeting in June, the 26th. Okay, at education on June the 26th at. 6.30. Anybody else for June? July. Pam. Okay, so I I will not be having a meeting. I just want to bring it to your attention. I will not be having a finance meeting the month of July because I'm required and mandated to have a hearing for the public on uh, within 10 days after um, Mr. Lowry gives the state of the tribe address. So that budget hearing on, on your, it's a misprint on July 13th, that is a budget hearing. It is not a budget workshop. That will be at 630. Immediately following that, uh, we need all council here for council training. That same night. Yes, we're 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 going to start receiving um our um all of our information electronically as much as possible. So we need everybody here for that training. Okay. Okay, Mr. Jody. July the eleventh. I'm gonna have a health meeting at six thirty. Meeting on July eleventh at six thirty. Mr. Richard. Housing meeting July 11, 730. Mr. Dewey? Um, 630 for Constitution and Ordinance on the 10th. July the 10th. I could only do two meetings that night because I want to clear up some items on Constitution and Ordinance that night. If I could have it by myself, I wouldn't mind that either. But no more than 
Anybody else? Mr. Jarrell? Yeah, the, the regular uh, economic development meetings, that will be three meetings that night. Do we don't want anybody? My night. I don't care what you do. Right, I'm just, night. I'm just trying to. Can he, can he big it 27th. Twenty seventh is gone. Fourth of July, kind of. Do we? I'm about that. How long do you think your meeting will really be? Doors brief. I I do mind it. Seven, seven, seven thirty, eight o'clock. What well, I mean. I don't want to push it out another the month. The problem with July is the whole week of the 4th is is Boom. events. So it cuts into our time before we, our, our window before our council meeting. Well, we'd be, you might have, so you might can start that in August. Are we going to do interviews that night? Do we, for the attorney? I mean, you. Twenty fourth. When journal? Twenty fourth. Economic, economic development. Mr. Richard. Okay, let me run over it with Mr. you right Vaughan fast. Mr. was mentioning want to do the um, scholarship ceremony on the 27th of July. Okay. Looking over the July agenda, look at your agenda so you've got everything down. July the 1st is our gala. Okay. The third... The week of the 4th is all um, Lumbee homecoming events. Moving to the 10th is the Constitution and Ordinance Committee at 6.30. On the 11th is the Health Committee at 6.30 and Housing at 7.30. Um, the 13th is a budget hearing followed by a um, council training. On the 20th is our monthly meeting on the 24th at 6 30 on monday the 24th is economic development and on the 27th is uh tentatively our scholarship awards at 6 30. mr ricky did you have anything you wanted to add mr bill uh, Ricky, how many people will the gym hold? Okay. Can, can I know the fire code? You can't go with the fire code number. I'm sure that administration is well aware of that, uh, Mr. Bill. Uh, we we will try best not to do that. Mr. Rudy. So, just... For clarification, I'm not sure if administration has been contacted yet or not. Um, I was I was spoken to today or contacted today about the tribe's um, sponsorship for the Julian Pierce dinner. Mr. Ricky, have y'all been contacted about sponsorship for the Julian Pierce dinner? Okay, so I was informed, and I'm not a, like I say, I'm not 100 percent sure that this has been a a customary thing that a tribe contributes by buying a table for the Julian Pierce dinner and I was asked if I would uh, bring that up to determine whether or not the tribe will be uh, buying a sponsorship for the Julian Pierce dinner this year it is August the 5th at 6 uh, o'clock p.m. Um, Julian Pierce Memorial Scholarship the tickets are $75 per person Ten. Sponsorship levels are five hundred dollars, a thousand, two thousand, and five thousand. So I don't know what level the, sp the tribe had contributed in the past, but I was just putting it on you, putting it on you guys' radar, Miss Sharon. 
It is August the 5th. And another thing, just to keep in mind, that is the week, um, the weekend that we are scheduled to be at our retreat in Wilmington. So um, that's been paid for. So if you are planning to attend, you'll have to leave Wilmington and come back that night. Tickets for seventy-five dollars to buy a table. Um, I think get a to get a table is at the two thousand or five thousand dollar level. So, as many of you know, I attended NCAI uh, maybe now a week ago, and so I would be remiss if um, I just didn't take a moment out and just give two shout outs actually three but you know ac locklear and courtney chavis are tribal members that work on a national level uh, ac locklear works for the indian health board as a federal relations director and courtney chavis works as a grant manager with ncai uh, i watched these two indians on these two lumbies on a national level at ncai and i wanted to share with council how many indian tribes leaders, council members, chairperson came in to support Lumbee because of the efforts of these two individuals on the national level. They have garnered tremendous respect by being the professional and caring uh, our people well. And so I really wanted to say that publicly uh, so that they are acknowledged that their work in Indian country every day is a good reflection on where they're from and who we are as a people. I also want to take the, a moment to recognize the third person uh, who was with me as the attorney, Heather McMillan Nakai. Um, I really appreciated her um, being the only council member at that convention. She was really beneficial in helping lead and guide because she also had worked on a national level with the Gaming Institute. And so we have some really great tribal members out there doing really great things in Indian country that bring a positive light to this tribe. And so I, I'd just be remiss if I did not publicly thank them. Ready? Just to follow up, Mr. Gerald, um, $2,000 is an eight person table and a half page and an, and an ad. People with a table. Yes, so we got to go up on ours next year. Miss Sharon, to kind of piggyback on what uh, Mr. Rudy was saying, so um, Mr. Julian Pierce was a graduate from Hawkeye High School at the age of 16. And we just got it um, passed actually a couple of weeks ago to hang his picture in our um, foyer. So we'll be having a ceremony um, for him as well. And when that's when that's planned and everything, I'll let everybody know so they can hopefully attend that as well. Thank you. Talking about him being so young, uh, we learned today that Dr. Woods actually started college at 15. Is that what I heard? 15 years old. Is that what we heard? Yeah, 15 years old. She had had graduated and was starting her <coughs> college journey at 15. I thought that was remarkable. 15, I couldn't even it couldn't drive. She would she had and the, and they talked about how she had skipped several grades that she was promoted several times during her um school years. Unbelievable. Um. Before we, before I make uh, entertain a motion to adjourn, I would just like to take a moment of silence for Dr. Ruth Woods, and um, and to just remember her legacy. Thank you, um, Mr. Bobby. Would you close us in prayer? Them all debris families and un and all the unsafe. Remember the family of Mr. Mofford Locker.
My great grandson, he's in Florida. And he I also remember myself uh, been having some issues. I got to the doctor tomorrow. Hopefully, they'll find out what's going on. They have to have some surgery, but they might just hurt myself. Madam Chair, y'all do look good in that prospect red. There's um. There's a. There's. There is. Well, if that's going to be the case, you're going to have to do Carolina blue next time. What am I? Blessing, Lord. Or Dallas Cowboy Blue and Gray. For Thursday. What? I'm doing that. Go do blue. My daughter would like that. I'll do the welcome. Address to send them. 